story time. Today we are going to read a book called Finders Keepers. This is about a story in India. I am going to talk about certain words that are going to come up in the book. We are going to practice how to say them. So the first one would be Namaste. Say Namaste. You can also join your hands and say Namaste. Then we can say Rajasthan. It is a state in India in which the story takes place. So can we all say Rajasthan? Then we also will come across a word called Toran. There is a food that we eat. It's called Chapati. It's kind of a bread which is rolled out like a tortilla. So can you all say Chapati? Finders Keepers, the true story in India by Robert Arnett, illustrated by Smita Turakia. A warm welcome. In India, a toran is hung over a doorway to welcome God and guests. Torans made of fresh flowers and leaves can be seen all across the country. In the state of Rajasthan, in northwest India, where the story takes place, torans are made of fabric and then decorated with brightly colored embroidery, appliques and mirrors. The pennants that hang down from toran represent leaves from sacred trees. This toran welcomes you to finders keepers. As you turn these pages, may you enjoy traveling with me to India, a country that has fascinated visitors for thousands of years. It is hard to look out a window and see the sights of the Indian countryside when every time your bus goes over a bump, you bounce so high off your seat, you almost hit your head on the roof. But there I was, bouncing along on my way to Mount Abu, a small town on a mountain in the state of Rajasthan. Some adventurous men and boys who could not get seats inside the bus rode on top with luggage. As our bus continued along the winding mountain road, I could see an old fort on top of a steep hill. Its tall, massive wall must have made it difficult to conquer. Throughout history, the people of Rajasthan have been admired for their bravery, sense of honor, loyalty and love of freedom. Even when invading armies much larger than theirs attacked the cities of Rajasthan, the townspeople would seldom surrender and often would fight to the last man. The women of Rajasthan were equally brave. The stories of their heroic deeds are often painted on walls of homes and palaces. The bus was packed with people and their belongings. Most of the women were dressed in brightly colored saris. Saris, saris. Many of the men were wearing traditional clothes and had colorful turbans on their heads. They had full moustaches that curled at each end. The rainbow colors of their clothing gave the inside of the bus a festive look. I was surprised to see that when a man took off his turban, on top of his head in a bag was his lunch. It was several flat pieces of bread called chapatis. Chapati, can you say chapati? And a few carrots. I had never seen anyone use a turban and his head as a lunch box. Though most passengers were strangers to each other, some people shared food. Others passed young children and babies around, perhaps to give the mothers a rest. The children were happy and contented to be entertained by total strangers, even by me. We quickly became like a big family traveling together. How beautiful to look upon everyone you meet as part of your family and being as dear to you as a brother, a sister or a parent. We stopped on a roadside rest stop as we got off the bus. I saw several people pointing up at a tree. Many large bats were hanging upside down from the tree limbs, roosting during the day. The harmless fruit bats called flying foxes looked like special effects from a vampire movie.
At a nearby food stall, a man was boiling milk mixed with sugar in a large cauldron like a large pot over an open fire. I bought a glass of hot milk that he topped with some cream skimmed from the surface of the steaming liquid. To cool it for me, a boy skillfully poured it from one glass to another. The delicious drink tasted like a milkshake. The snacks that were piled high looked appealing and I bought some to munch on for the rest of the trip. The next morning in Mount Abu, I took a bus tour. We went to some of the most famous temples of the Jain religion that are known for their intricate marble carvings. On the way, I saw Jain nuns and monks walking down the mountain road. In one hand, they were carrying their food containers in a white cotton cloth. With their other hand, they were sweeping the ground ahead of them so that they would not hurt any insects or even seeds by accidentally stepping on them. Their mouths were covered with a small cloth to avoid swallowing even the tiniest insects floating in the air. Because Jains believe that everything has a soul, they are very gentle people and respect and protect all forms of life. <clears throat> we also visited a Hindu temple that had a statue of Shiva. Can you say Shiva? Shiva. Though Hinduism believes in only one God, it gives names and forms to gods, many functions and qualities to help us better understand its mysterious power and intelligence. To Hindus, Shiva represents God's power that brings all things into creation and takes everything back to its origin when it stays in the when its stay in the world is completed. The last stop on the tour was a temple built on the highest peak in Rajasthan. It offered a terrific view of the surrounding countryside. While going up the path that led to the temple, I stopped to buy some postcards. As I walked away, I felt someone tapping my elbow. A young boy with dark hair was standing behind me. To my surprise, in his outstretched hand was my wallet. I must have dropped it when I bought the postcard. I offered the boy a reward for returning my wallet, but he would not accept it. I even tried to put some money into his hands, but he put them behind his back. Again, I made an attempt to reward him for his honesty, but he refused. I could not understand why the boy would not take the money. A man passing by stopped to watch us. I asked him if he could speak English and if he could help me. This boy found my wallet and returned it to me. Please explain to him that I want to reward him for his honesty. <clears throat> the man began talking to the boy in their language. After a few minutes, the boy did most of the talking. I was beginning to wonder if either of them understood me. Then the man turned to me and said, This boy does not understand why you should give him any money for returning to you what is yours. The idea of accepting a reward for doing the right thing makes no sense to him. Finders keepers? No way. Which way? That night, I thought of the boy's honesty again. It would have taken him many, many years to earn the amount of money in the wallet. Yet he was not tempted to keep it. He listened to his conscience. The dictionary defines conscience as the recognition within us of right and wrong regarding what we do and why we do it. It urges us towards the right action. Some people believe that our conscience or inner voice is the silent voice of God trying to guide us and that if we listen to it, we will always do what is right. To do what is right in any situation is one of the most important principles of Indian culture and is one way to explain their concept of dharma. It means do what you ought to do and not what you want to do. It is called dharma. The young boy never considered keeping the wallet for himself. 
when he knew that it belonged to someone else. He returned it because it was the right thing to do, not because he hoped to get a reward. To him, his reward was in knowing that he had done what was right, and that is the best reward of all. Anyway, that way, this way, the Dharma way is the right way. Now it is time for me to say Namaste. Namaste is how many Indians greet each other instead of saying hello and goodbye. While uttering Namaste, they place the fingers and palms of both hands together in front of their chest and slightly bow their head. It is also called a Pranam, pranam and is a gesture of humility and respect. In the ancient Sanskrit language, Sanskrit like San, script, language, to pranam or to say namaste means the God in me bows to the God in you or my soul bows to your soul. It expresses the belief that God is present deep within each person, that skin color, race or religion does not alter the soul image of God within each of us. So if we choose to believe this, how could we be unkind to anyone? So dear ones, I hope you enjoyed traveling with me to India. I enjoyed traveling with you. Namaste.